Hello and welcome back to my Drone How episode. My name is Raida Boost and in this brief video we take a look how we can share our point cloud using some kind of web service. This web service can be open source or a commercial one. In this video we are using open source one. But before we can actually upload a point cloud to some kind of a web service we need to have one. So how to get a point cloud? Obviously we can carry out some laser measurements, but we can also get those point clouds out from our drone survey program. In this brief video we practice workflows using landboard data. This landboard data is also available as points. But in my later videos we do the same using drone survey program and point clouds from that survey program. Once we have converted this data and uploaded it into our web service, we can use some follow-up activities like picking measurements, areas, volumes, also drawing cross-sections, comparing the data in between different time frames or combining point clouds and meshes. There are loads of different possibilities that we can do using some open source platforms. And believe me, it's really easy to share this information to anybody and anybody can do the same. So let's practice the workflows and let's start. As I said, we practice those workflows with Estonian land board data, but we can follow the same principles also in our later videos in where we use drone survey point clouds. So once I have opened up land board web page, I can download elevation data based on map number and to be able to know which or what map number I want to have I have a mid file which is about Estonia and once I zoom in my focus area is around uh, Tallinn University of Technology which is actually in here and this red line pounds my area which is 3 by 4 squares and one square is one by one kilometer. So total area is 12 squared kilometers. Once I click on this particular pole line, I can see that uh, my number is this. I will copy it. And if I enter this information into map sheet number box, I can then get elevation data in LAZ format. And depending which year I'm interested in, I can also download multiple versions. There are also different versions in terms of point densities. But this data for cities is available approximately 20 points per square meter. Once I download those LAZ formats, and remember I do have 12 files, 3 by 4, I need to convert those files to be able to use in my chosen web service. This web service I'm using is called Potre and it's open source. Anybody can download it and anybody can upload it into our own web server and use this platform with their own data. I will come back to this uh, a bit later. So I enter my sheet number and then I download those LAZ files and in the end I do have 12 of those. Now I do need to convert those into LAS format and I can use different tools for that for example LAS tools. Once I download those LAS tools I can pick different sub tool to carry out some particular conversion. Yes it can be automated because it supports also command line option but I will show what steps are involved in my current workflow and hopefully in that way it's easier to understand. Actually it all depends which web platform you will use and how many different conversions you do need to do. So this is just an example. At first I need to pick lasszip.exe which helps me to convert it into last format. So laz to las. And for that I click browse because my files are downloaded into D directory point cloud and my LAZ files. I just double click to include those into conversion process 
And because I do have 12 of those, just one by one, and I can also see that they are filling up my 3x4 area. Now, once I have loaded those files, I can click output, I can say to which directory I want to convert those files, then I can check that OK, I want to have LAS files, and then just decompress. So once I have decompressed, my files are quite large already, meaning that if I'm checking LAZ, my original files, zipped files, I do have about 4 gigabytes. But once I convert those into LAS, then I do have about 16 gigabytes. Now the next step is that because Portrait does not support the latest LAS format, which can be for example 1.4, then I do need to convert it into some previous version. Again, I'm using LAS tools, I close this window, and now I pick LAS to LAS.exe, and in here again I'm selecting the directory from where I can find my files, so this is really similar step, point cloud and last folder and selecting those files one by one. But it's important that after I select my output directory, I also add additional options like set version major and I can use 1.3, also 1.1 is fine. This means now that I will convert my files into previous version. Output format, again LAS and then just run it. As a result, I then have previous version format available, but it's in the same size, 16 gigabytes. Now, before I move to my final conversion, which is portrait format, I prefer to combine those files together into one LAS file. Yes, you may decide that you want to keep those separately, because then you have an option that you can turn it on or off in your web service. But currently, I do prefer to combine those into one file, which means that uh, I have to use additional conversion tool or merge tool. So I close this one. I go to last tools again, bin. And from here, I'm selecting LAS merge. Again, I'm selecting the source, D folder, point cloud, and LAS 1.3, older format. And then once I pick all those 12 files, I can now give a name. It's up to you what you give. Output format, LAS, and then run. As a result, you then have a merged file, which is almost the same as single files combined. So 17 gigabytes. Now the final conversion starts, and it's converting it into portrait format, or into format that portrait supports. Again, you can use last tools. So I close this one. I hit last tools, and bin. And now I'm picking LAS publish. So double click. Again, I'm selecting the source, D folder, point cloud, LAS 13 merge. I select my one file. So this is three by four original squares. And then I'm doing some additional tune ups on the right hand side. For example, I can check to where I want to save it. So definitely some other folder. Output format will be bin. I can give a name to my file, which is then uploaded with those subfolder structure into my web server. I can change that name also later, also title can be changed later, so those can be as is. And then I can click run, and once this process has been carried out, I'm almost done with my conversion. Meaning that I do have now my portrait folder structure which should be uploaded into my web server. And then I can click on some HTML file and open up it just using web service. So how do I upload it? I will close this dialog. Before I start the upload, my general recommendation is that uh, you first download Portrait web service itself, meaning that you go to Portrait GitHub. You have a download option here. Portrait, you download it and then you upload it into your web server. This is just a core Portrait version with different examples. So you can first check that it works and then you can load up it with your own data. So once you download it, you can use some FTP software 
to upload this portrait into your web server and it will look like so. You decide which folder you want to use. I'm using uh, portrait folder and this is the same structure as it is once you download it from the portrait site. But it also has some examples, yes? And you can check those examples by yourself before uploading new ones. But uploading new ones is really simple. Yes, of course, you can decide into which subfolder you include those examples or HTML files. But you have to ensure that once you include those own HTML files that any references can be actually find from your web server. Which means that uh, if I open up my new one, Taltec HTML, right click and edit, I can see that uh, it will reference to my portrait folder structure. And those are key files that should be here. But then in addition, and depending on for what you are using this portrait, in addition, you should also have point cloud section. And in here I have a reference from where my converted point clouds can be found. So I started from this folder, which was converted offline. I have point clouds, I have Taltec subfolder, and this is a key file, cloud. And to this, it is referenced also in here, cloud. And this data folder is actually my bin files. Altogether, this is about six gigabytes. So I do need to upload this data into my web server, do some changes in my HTML file, and ready to go and I can open up my HTML using my web browser. So let's do that. I close those windows, open up a web browser and then just typing in my web server address, also subfolder, portrait, examples and my fresh point cloud, taltech.html. I hit enter. My user interface of portrait is loading up. In here I have different um, tools available, but if I scroll down, because my angle is not correct to point to my point cloud, I can see that I do have one point cloud included. Obviously, in the same way, you can actually include different point clouds into your HTML file. But right now it's just one big point cloud. I double click on this and then I can see my points in all glory. Of course, as I said, the density of this point cloud is not huge. It's quite small actually, 20 points per square meter. But for general viewing and comparative studies, it's really easy to have it. For example, I can also go to my appearance section and uh, use point budget. In that way, I have lots of more points visible on screen. And then I can use different tools that are available through Portrait. For example, I can pick coordinate, I can pick a distance, like so, it's in meters. I can do right click to cancel it out. I can pick area, like so, just picking those points. And then right click again, I can zoom in and see square meters. I can do simple volume calculations, but I can also use cross section tool, height profile. I just hit like so, across the street, maybe like so, right click again. And if I scroll down, I can now see my cross section in 2D profile view, just hitting this button. It will be loaded up and the density of point cloud is also visible in here. And once I move along my profile, I can also see a dot appear in appropriate location. I can export this data out to use for later studies in simple 2D file, CSV file. I can also see those coordinates in here in property section. But there are loads of other possibilities that you can use with Portrait. So I close this down. For example, you can combine meshes and point clouds. You can also include uh, different point clouds from the same object. For example, in my later video, I will focus on this um, building in here, which is under construction. But because I have carried out drone survey, I can generate point clouds also from this drone survey and include this data into the same point cloud. And of course, that data is more tense, meaning that I can use it for more precise measurements, conclusions. I have also clipping possibilities, meaning that I can do sections, I can use different backgrounds, 
but let's keep them options also for later videos. And of course, this same link can be shared with anybody. Currently, it doesn't save anything, but using different scripts, it's possible that uh, once one guy is adding a annotation, if I add some annotation, maybe include a building name, once a connection is established with some server, then also those notes can be seen once anybody else is entering to the same link. You can also carry out uh, animations following some uh, camera path, also something we take a look in another video. If you got excited to see my next episode, please do subscribe to my channel and you get notifications once I upload a new video. Bye bye.